Hey there folks, welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art, and culture. I'm currently in transit today between cities, but I figured I'd knock out a couple of reviews along the way. So specifically in these cases, we're only gonna be talking about pop and R&B adjacent records. So let's start off with something that really disappointed me, shall we? So remember when I talked about Chromio earlier this year and called their newest record their worst to date? Do you want a worse version of that? Well, okay, here's the sad thing. I've never really been a bad Rabbits fan to begin with. Their startup album did feel like a poor man's Chromio, but then their second record was going in this weird political vein that got changed genres altogether from the more funk inspired direction to something that was well, a little bit more pop rockish, a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more hip hop inspired, a lot more political, and it did not work for me whatsoever. But hey, they decided to go back to what's works, and I gotta be honest, it didn't work before, it doesn't work now. The front man just does not have the level of charisma or winking to the audience self-aware parody in order to bring the style to life, and thus some of the songs that are trying to come across as more sexual get creepy really, really creepy when it comes to the writing. And that could have been partially excused if the synthesizers that they brought in didn't sound like they were imported from 2011 and a lot of the vocal production coming from even earlier. I'm honestly a little bit amazed how one can even appreciate this album. It's trying to be lightweight and upbeat, but really there's no decent hooks and it just never brings together the level of character it truly needs or deserves to come across as remotely convincing. No guys, the most thing I can say about this is that it's only seven songs so it goes by really fast but a couple of the songs really are quite excruciating so i'm not going to recommend this light four to ten check it out if you're curious but even then you can afford to stay away Man Alive, this was one of those records I was really excited to hear. This album's got a ton of critical acclaim. I was a big fan of Georgia Smith when I first heard her on More Life, which is the Drake project from last year. I had a lot of hopes it would be really good, and by all accounts and purposes, all the reviews going in made me think this could be the R&B album that I could really get behind. It's not clicking for me. Folks, I have gone over this album consistently for the past month or so. It's just taken a while for me to get to this point, but one last revisit just confirmed it and that I think it's decent. I think it's good. It's not great. And breaking down why is honestly a little tricky because there's no one factor that ultimately cripples it. Let's start off with Georgia Smith herself because I think she is a great singer. I will say it again. She's got a lot of emotive presence. She is a real find. She's got the sort of charisma to carry a record with no features on her own. I will give her that, although she shouldn't rap. That is not a lane and sound that is good for her, even if the hip hop sounds do work behind her. But man, I wish her vocal producers had gotten on that page too because the vocal production on this record is a mess. There are some songs where she sounds good and more of an organic Jhenaiko vein, but there's some places where she sounds very flat or the reverb is utterly abused. It's just, there's no consistency whatsoever and it really hurts someone who is as good of a singer as her. Then we have the production, which again, kind of a mixed bag. I like the more organic elements, the more stately, elegant pieces. They do fit her voice, especially the rougher organic patches. And I like the hip hop beats behind her. And when I say that, I mean the more 90s hip hop beats that are a little scratchier, have a little bit more organic presence. Because when we start bringing in the more modern, desaturated, clunkier beats, even with some of the pitch shifting, they're not as prevalent. They don't show up as often, but they don't really help her. And especially when you have a record that's already short on momentum, it can make it feel really slow, especially start to drag on the back half. But if I'm looking for a problem with this Georgia Smith album, it would probably come down most to the lyrics. And to explain why, I need to talk about what works about Georgia Smith. And this is kind of hard to grasp, but there's a sort of 
teenage capriciousness. She's very young, but she's speaking with the wisdom and weight and caution of somebody who is older. And I appreciate that because it gives certain songs, especially early on when she approaches relationships, a certain guardedness that does fit, especially in the more breakup related songs that she is willing to take a step back. And even if this person is the one, she's not going to let them all in. Granted, the verisimilitudes kind of crack when she starts giggling at the end of songs. I didn't like it when Miley did it three years ago. I don't really like it here, but it fits. It fits the persona which she's coming forward with. And then you get the back half of the album where I'm not sure if this was a studio note or something that she wanted to pursue directly given that she did write these songs, but she falls into more love ballads that are a lot more sincere, almost in an Adele vein, and I get the uh, Peel, and she can certainly perform them, but they don't really fit with the elements of her persona that I find so captivating and so unique. Honestly, they feel like somebody doing a riff on something that we've seen done in R&B so many times before. It doesn't really bring out the elements of unique personality that even then are not that unique, especially if you've been listening to anything Janae Aiko has been putting out the past four or five years. In the end, I like this. It's not bad by any stretch of the mind. I think it is definitely promising as a debut, and I'm happy she's got some hype behind her, but I don't like it nearly as much as everybody else does. I don't nearly think it's as distinct or special. Again, I've heard Janae Aiko do a lot of these sounds and do them better, and for all the fans getting behind them, I know this will probably piss you off, but I'm giving this a strong 6 out of 10. If you're curious, check it out. If you're not, you're not missing a lot, but hey, I'm curious to see where Georgia Smith is gonna go from there, because again, I do hear a lot of promise, so we'll see. So thus far, I have reviewed three Ariana Grande records, and I've given them all the same score. Spoiler alert, it's gonna happen here as well, but stay with me, I have a lot to say here. Now, the one thing I've said about Ariana Grande in the past is that, while I like a lot of her work, it's been a while for her to find her sound. More specifically, to find a sound that's not stage managed into oblivion by her label. I do tend to blame them for a lot of this. Now, the one thing I will say about Sweetener, and one reason why it is so polarizing, is that I think she actually did find a sound on this record specifically through collaboration with Pharrell Williams and doubling down on a slightly weirder, slightly more atmospheric, slightly more off-kilter, but still contemporary pop direction. It definitely does not feel like she's making label records this time around, for better or for worse. Now, to be fair, Ariana Grande is still working in pretty well-established territory for herself at this point. It's still very much pop R&B. The synth lines are still as burnished, if anything, even more so and more full and atmospheric than they were on her last album. And even going further than that, the trap elements, specifically in the thick wells of bass and even some of the more detailed skittering elements and the hi-hats, they're still very prominent. This is a contemporary record. But what I like about this album is that, especially when Pharrell comes in, he brings in some of those burbling, skittering elements we haven't seen in full force since the early to mid 2000s, and it's a really good fit for her, particularly in her vocals. If I'm going to highlight any element of this album that has gone above and beyond, it's Ariana Grande herself. She sounds fantastic fantastic on this album, finally learning to double down on her cooing elements, which has always been a better fit for her, let's call it, a little sloppier enunciation, and makes her sound a lot more sensual and convincing. Dangerous Woman might have been the steps in that direction, but Sweetener is where she really sticks the landing. I have to give her props on that, and the reason why so many of these songs work at all is because of her. And on this subject, one of the key things that's always frustrated me about Ariana Grande is her inability to get production that really suits her voice. And if there's one thing that Pharrell gets in this lane, it's being able to double down on the cooing, sensuous, specifically organic multi-tracking that makes her sound exquisite. There's been a lot of R&B that's doubled down on a lot of flattened vocal layers, and one thing that Pharrell gets is that allowing that more burnished, organic presence to come through in her voice and her backing vocals makes her sound even better. He clearly realizes what is her greatest strength and he manages to leverage it as much as he possibly could in order to bring out those deeper wells of a complicated emotion. Unfortunately, this does 
doesn't exactly carry over to her guest stars. I've said this in the past, but Ariana Grande has limited chemistry when it comes to some of the artists that she's worked with, and it's no exception here. Nicki Minaj is easily the worst part of The Light is Coming, and as much as I like Missy Elliott, she doesn't really fit as well on the song that they're collaborating with as I would otherwise like to see. And unfortunately, this also leads to my other gripes. These are twofold. The first is that, let's be honest, as much as Pharrell has a knack for making impressively catchy songs and flipping samples in interesting ways, this is certainly the most eclectic record that Ariana Grande has ever made. Sometimes the hooks just aren't entirely there, specifically in the midsection. In terms of pure song craft, this is where the label interference may have helped. There's nothing here that's gonna hit as hard as Love Me Harder. And on the one hand, that's okay. I like seeing Ariana Grande moving in a more consistent, interesting direction where she's defining her sound, but I can also see why people who are looking for more of that pop focus will be kind of turned off by a lot of what's on display here. The second problem comes in some of the lyrics, and this is where I think Ariana Grande continues to struggle a little bit. Not that there isn't some good ideas, but they feel undercooked. In terms of being a pure lyricist, Ariana Grande is still a couple steps behind, and her co-writers aren't exactly helping her here. You get good ideas that are established but rarely expanded upon. And while there are some exceptions like R.E.M. and Good Night and Go, songs that I otherwise like, let me stress this, they aren't quite as deeply refined as they could be, especially for all the turbulent ups and downs that Ariana Grande is clearly experiencing. And for as much emotionality as she's bringing to the table, there isn't quite the level of complexity that you really need. This is not a Mitski album, sadly. And Here's the other thing, and this is maybe a pure nitpick for me. It gets really hard to take a look at some of the relationship songs on this record, specifically a song like Pete Davidson, and a lot of the more romantic platitudes that are being expressed, and realize that they are ultimately tied back to the person she's currently engaged to. Given that she did title an interlude after him, that it's more of a snapshot in time, and I'm not quite sure how well some of these songs will age outside of the context of the album in 2018 at this moment. That's the danger you have when you tie songs to direct events, and if the sound of this record changes, given how contemporary it sounds, it could well become dated very quickly, in a way that some of her previous hits that might be more label managed might otherwise not. But at the end of the day, I like this album. I like what this says for Ariana Grande's career going forwards, in that she's able to finally nail down a sound that is distinctively her and not taken by Republic and mismanaged into the ground. This is a record where the production sounds as good, if not better, than it ever has, and Ariana Grande has finally matured as a singer that really give her any number of producers. I think she could do something really powerful. I think her collaborations with Pharrell, they definitely work for her here. She just needs tightening up in the song rain direction and maybe a couple stronger hooks so the album doesn't drag midway through and really the ending is kind of misshapen as a whole the album does tend to go on a bit long so on that strong 7 out of 10 I like this guys so yeah check it out it's worth it